What is up everyone? All right, today I've got a bag full of, I was gonna call them goodies, but baddies. What we're doing today is we're trying on some makeup that I think I'm probably gonna declutter. They're kind of on the chopping block. A lot of these are ones, they just like haven't worked for me. I just don't like them. But there are a few that I are just kind of forgotten about products that I kind of want to give one more shot to see, okay, how do I feel about them? So we're just going to see. There are some repeats. Like I have two foundations in here. I'm obviously not going to use both today. So we'll just kind of make some, some game day decisions. But yeah, that's what we're going to do. I'm excited. I did a waiver on my hair today and I just like it, man. Honestly, it makes my hair look like my hair naturally does. <laughs> like, But it's just a little more kempt. You know what I mean? Anywho but we need it out of the way. So the first thing I wanna try is, it's actually kinda newer to me, but this is the Wet n Wild Impossible Primer. I just don't know how to feel about it. I don't think it does anything, and I think that's why I'm like, why would I spend the time using it when I don't feel like it does anything? So it says it's a silicone-free primer that does it all, mattifies, hydrates, and blurs pores. We're gonna see. You're watching me in natural light. It's funny, I'm like, gosh, I look washed out. I'm like, no, no, Jess, you're just really fair. <laughs> you can't help it. So it is clear. We're just gonna kinda, doesn't have like a noticeable primer. Did I say primer? Smell, oh my gosh, Jesse. Are you okay? It feels good on the skin, you know? It feels a little hydrating, but like I said, I just don't know if it makes enough of a difference in mattification. Like I really don't feel like it mattifies. Blurred pores, maybe a little bit, but you definitely wanna give it a minute to like sink in. So we'll give that a second. So I'm a little torn on the next one to use. I'm kind of torn between the Revlon Colorstay Light Cover Foundation and the Physician's Formula Silk Foundation Elixir. I think I'm gonna do this one because I've this one is newer to me. This one I've had a while and it has been, I couldn't even tell you the last time I used it. And I don't fully remember exactly how I feel about it. So I don't know that this is necessarily on the chopping block, although, We'll use it today and kind of see, but I want to make sure I shake it really well because it's been in my collection for a while. So it says it's ultra nourishing, ultra fluid, weightless foundation elixir, improves appearance of skin tone and texture, airbrush dewy finish. Those are some bold claims. I don't remember like hating this, but I think there's a reason I wasn't like reaching for it. Cause like when I try something new, especially if it's in a video and I'm loving it, I start, I start using it again the next day, like I'm too excited about it. And so the fact that this wasn't one that I did that with kind of tells me a lot of what I need to know. Let's just see though, you never know. And I wanna say I tried this in the winter or spring. Maybe this is a good time of year. I feel like my skin has been pretty decent lately when it comes to like dryness and stuff like that. So it definitely doesn't cover a ton. Let's try it on this side. I know it's bright, but I, I just like the natural light. I just miss it. And I use it in every video, but Sometimes, I mean, it just depends on the day. Today is like a brighter day, so it works. But sometimes I just feel like it's been so rainy lately. Let's try this with a brush. Okay, definitely more coverage with a brush. But I don't think it sinks into the skin as well. So it looks a little bit like, not splotchy, but like you can see the lines from blending it. Whereas it looks nice and like dewy on the other side with the sponge. So I think I'm gonna go back in just with the sponge to kind of finish that side off and it instantly looks better. This is looking nice though. I would imagine this is gonna be one of those, okay, the dropper does not work in case you were curious. I'm just using the side of it. But this I would bet is gonna be something that's not gonna be long wearing, you know? I'm kind of digging it. I really am. I, if you've got a lot to cover, you're not gonna like this. You would probably already know that about yourself though, looking at a product like this, but I feel like it's looking pretty nice. I think my best friend, we were at Target a while ago and I wanna say she picked this up. I should ask her if she likes it. I remember it was something from Physicians Formula and I remember thinking, I've tried that, but I don't remember how I feel. <laughs> like, I think I liked it. Yeah, the second layer didn't cover a ton more, so I don't think it's super buildable, but it is pretty. Like, I feel like my skin looks pretty. So if you don't have a lot to cover and you're not concerned about it being something that's gonna last you 12 hours, you might really like it. So at the end of this video, I'll kind of divide the products up and tell you what I'm keeping and what I'm not. I was gonna try to do it as we go, but I might change my mind as other products go on with it. So. We'll do that at the end of the video. So the next thing I wanted to try is the Fenty Beauty Bright Fix Eye Brightener. I remember not liking this. And again, this was a recent purchase of mine. It just wasn't great. I don't know how else to word it. It feels like I'm putting on an eye cream, which sounds good, 
you know, at first, but it like, it's so streaky. That's the word I was looking for earlier, streaky. It was so streaky and didn't stay well. It just looked weird on the skin. And I mean, I've tried a gajillion concealers and I love concealer. And this was just like, at least from what I remember, one of the worst I've tried. So we're gonna do one with a brush, one with a sponge and just see. I don't remember how I did it previously, but I have intentionally not reached for this at all because every time I see it, I'm like, oof, no. Okay, let me zoom you in to see this, okay? Look how bad that looks. <laughs> like it's got, it, it, it's meeting with the foundation really weird right there. It just, it looks awful. So let's try it with the sponge on this side and see. It's just not good, you guys. I heard someone that was loving it though. So I'm like, okay, if you like this, how are you applying it? What are you doing differently? Okay, I do think it looks a lot better with the sponge. The brush just kind of moved it around. I just, I don't like it, y'all. I really don't. So this is one I can tell you right now. <laughs> But now I don't know why I didn't zoom in earlier, just to look at the foundation. I think it does look pretty nice though, right? I think if you have oily skin, it might not stay on well for you, but normal to dry, it looks really pretty. This is one I can't really use, but I wanted to mention it. It's the Flower Beauty Heat Wave Bronzing Essence. I just don't use this. The way you're supposed to do it is to blend a few drops in your foundation or moisturizer to wear it and to kind of give like that bronze look, or you can wear it alone. I won't do either of those things. So right off the bat, I should have known <laughs> before I bought this. What I was hoping it would be is like a lightweight like bronzer to put on top of your makeup, like as your bronzer, and it just doesn't work like that. So I think it might finally be time. See, the other thing, the only reason I might wanna keep it is I have not tried it like mixing with foundation to help get it to match like when I'm self-tanned, you know what I mean? To kind of slightly darken a foundation. I don't know. Do you guys ever use it that way and does it work for you? That would really be my question. Let me just try it on my hand. I'm gonna mix it with this. So many dropper bottles, so little time. None of the droppers work, man. It doesn't work in the flower one either. Drugstore, if you're gonna use a dropper bottle, at least make sure it works, man. Okay, so it definitely does deepen it. Wow, okay, that's actually really pretty. It definitely does darken it, not a ton, and I didn't put a lot on it though in fairness, but it does give it a little bit of a deeper color and it adds a little bit of glow because it does have some like very light sparkle or like glitter, shimmer particles is what I'm trying to say, not glitter, but like slightly shimmery. Let me think about that one. Because by the way, when I would try it like as my bronzer, it just, it doesn't show up. It blends away because it is kind of a, sheer wash of bronze, so it just doesn't work in the way I was hoping that it would. I don't often anymore film two videos in a day, but I am filming two videos today and I would like my makeup to look okay. So I already know I'm gonna get rid of that concealer, so I'm just gonna throw a little bit of the Catrice True Skin on top of this just to make it look a little more, just better, because I know that I've gotta <laughs> film again. I hope you guys understand. So I need to throw something in my brows and then we will be back to do some eyeshadow. All right, this one is from MAC and it is their Paint Pot in Vintage Selection. I bought this a long time ago. It's okay, it's not that old and it still looks pretty good actually, but every time I swatch it, I'm like, yes. I mean, there's a reason I bought it. If you look at the swatch, it's so pretty, right? These are their cream shadows. They've been around forever. I really like some of the more like matte shades that are close to my skin tone, like Painterly. I use that as like an eye primer and I've loved that for years, but they have these like other like colors that are really, really pretty. But every time I put this on, I feel like, eh. So we're gonna try it. It's been a minute since I've used this. I think it's like too close to my skin tone. Do you know what I mean? And the shimmer is, is there, but it's so slight that I feel like I, it's not obvious. And so then I don't end up reaching for it. Cause I'm like, well, that was a waste of time. Like I never want to just wear this. Whereas there are other shades they've had in the past that I really liked that I can wear as a one shadow look and be done. But this one, I just don't feel like it looks like I did anything. And I like it to look like I did something. So I'll go ahead and put it on the other eye. I hate to part with stuff like this. Like it makes me sad. Also, I've been filming a lot, like pre-filming a lot. So if my voice sounds a little hoarse, uh, it's because it is. <laughs> I've been pre-filming because we're gonna go visit my brother uh, here soon. So I wanted to make sure. And now that I don't have to like be editing before I leave too, since I have a lovely editor, I uh, actually can do it and not feel as stressed as I used to. So that is nice. Anyway, I think it's time. What a bummer. I love that I said I wasn't gonna tell you until the end what I'm gonna declutter or not. And 
I've been doing it all along. This is something I bought because I was nostalgic for it and it is from Smashbox. It's this little eyeshadow trio in Showmance. And it's so cute because it looks like a little camera lens and then it's got these three shades here. I just don't like these shades together and I don't reach for green very often. So for me to reach for this, I never feel like I can do like a complete look. So I think what I'm gonna do is put this all over, well, just like on top of this paint pot. It's a really pretty kind of light color that kind of leans a little bit gold, almost like a white gold, you know? And I think the quality of this is fine, but I wanna try this gold shade in the crease. It's all shimmer too, so I never feel like I can fully do a complete look with it. I mean, I can, but it's not totally my taste. Okay, that gold is like dark. Like that's showing up. Yeah, I mean, it looks good. I don't think it looks bad. Let me try a little of the green in like the outer corner. I feel like it actually looks kind of nice. This brush is working well for the outer corner too. It's the e.l.f. blending brush. There's a little bit of fallout from that, but I think all in all, it actually looks really nice. But is this something I'm gonna reach for all the time? I just don't think so. I just don't think so. So let me think about it. So I just tight lined my eyes a bit, but I wanna try this one out again. It's from Rare Beauty. It's the Perfect Strokes Liquid Liner. This thing exploded on me last time. And I've heard from some of you guys that you kind of had a similar issue with this. So I'm gonna wipe it off again. Hopefully it's clean enough. If I'm being honest, that was the main reason I wasn't reaching for it. It just leaks everywhere, like from the tip. But what's cool about it is it's like a calligraphy brush. It's super black. I will give it that, super black. I have to say, I like the product itself. I really do. I mean, it's super black. That was easy to apply. I think I used to think in my head when I would see it in my drawer because it leaked everywhere. I was like, oh yeah. And it's gonna like get all over my face. Like I just felt like I remembered it feathering, but it, it didn't. So go figure. See, this is why I need to try things, you know, again. All right, so I just threw on some of the Anastasia cream bronzer and the blush. I have two different blushes I wanna retry, but I think I'm gonna do this one because I just recently gave it some guff because I just don't feel like it's very good, but there were quite a few people that were like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you don't like it. I love it. So I was like, let me try this again. So it's from Rare Beauty. It is the Melting Blush. This one's a nearly neutral. I've just felt like every time I've applied it that it just kind of blends away slash the parts that don't look splotchy, it lifts up my makeup. So let me try it. I'm gonna try it with my finger first. Okay. <laughs> it doesn't look terrible, right? Like it really doesn't. Let me try it with a stipple brush. This is the e.l.f. one I use with tons of different cream blushes. It's all right. I feel like the makeup stayed down better than it normally does, so that is a good sign. Maybe the Wet n Wild primer is actually doing something there. It's just not like revolutionary to me. You know what I mean? And I just feel like it's a little finicky and I always have to be really careful when I apply it, or at least that's how I felt every other time I've used it. And maybe it's a shade thing, but I feel like I've used this one more than anything and it was typically the one that would look a little splotchy. The highlight I wanna use is more of a forgotten product and I wanna see how I feel about it. It's from MAC. It's their cream color base in Pearl. I got this back when I did a full face of MAC and I bought a bunch of your guys' recommendations. I'm gonna do it with my finger and let me just show you a swatch of it. It's a, thick is not the right word, but it, it's really a pretty highlighter shade for someone near my skin tone. But I just feel like other cream highlighters were typically easier to work with, which is why I haven't reached for it a ton. Well, that was easy though, huh? I feel like it looks pretty. Let's try it on the brow bone. Definitely can lean icy. So if you don't like that, I would avoid maybe this shade. So that was a pleasant surprise. Really easy to apply. It looks really pretty. That's how I like my highlighter to look, you know? Oh, I never mentioned the other blush that's on the chopping block is this ColourPop Cheek Dew. Really for me, I remember the formula I liked. I just didn't like this shade and they were sold out of like all of the shades I would have typically chosen. So really what I should probably do with this is maybe declutter the shade, but think about like maybe repurchasing or I mean purchasing a color I would actually like for my skin. All right, the mascara. This one bummed me out that I didn't like it, but maybe it needed some time to dry out and it might be great. It's the Essence Bye Bye Panda Eyes. So many of you guys love this. That's why I bought it. And so I know it works. 
it works for people. So I want to give this a go. I'm wondering if maybe, like I said, the first time I used it, it just wasn't ready yet. <laughs> but you know what I mean? I just feel like a lot of mascaras are like that and maybe this is one of them. So the wand is just like a typical classic natural bristle wand. To be honest, this is the kind of wand I like. I like natural bristles. But I think the idea is that, of this is that you're not, yeah, it's smudge proof mascara. That's why it's called Bye Bye Panda Eyes. And I tend to like a lot of Essence mascaras, which is why it surprised me that I didn't love this one. It doesn't look terrible. It's just not as volumizing as I typically like, but I do think it looks good. I just don't think I would buy this again is my thing. I do think it's working a little bit better than I remembered it. So I do think having it dry out a bit is the move, you know, if you have the luxury of time. <laughs> I definitely did a little bit darker of an eye look than I've done in a while thanks to this trio. So that was kind of nice. Y'all know me. So I have this Maybelline glass spray. And what I remembered about this was that it was too much. It was too dewy. So what I want to try first is putting on just a powder. This is the Makeup Revolution powder foundation. I really am enjoying because I have not powdered a bit. And even our cheek products were cream, you know. And I want to do my under eye. I'm just throwing on. <laughs> I'm so high maintenance with separate powders for these, but I bet a lot of you guys use different powders. The Kosas powder on my under eye. Honestly, this Kosas powder, I love all over my face. This is my favorite powder I've tried in such a long time. It just flattens the area there really nicely. You know what I mean? I just feel like it makes my bags look less obvious. Magic. So it says glass skin look, dewy finish all day wear. You can use after makeup application or on its own. I'm nervous. I don't want to do too much. Okay, I don't like the sprayer, I can tell you that right now. Even holding it that far away, it got this much of my hair and like this much of my shirt. Like the sprayer just goes too wide, you know what I mean? So that off the bat, I feel like you can just see, look at that oil, baby. And I am not an oily person. So this is just one that I know some people love this kind of thing, especially if you have crazy dry skin. It's just not for me. It's just not. I'm thinking about repowdering. I think I'm gonna. Is that bad? I just don't like the look. My skin is gonna be so glad when I take all this makeup off tonight. All these layers of like concealer and powder and spray and powder again. Alrighty, for lips, I have a few things I wanted to talk about. So these little buddies from Charlotte Tilbury, these are the, of course I don't know the actual name, but they're like these super creamy moisturizing lipsticks. They're in like a thinner bullet. The two shades I have, I just don't like on me. This one is called Happy Peach and it's a pretty color, but I, like it looks weird on me. I'm gonna try both of them on. And then this pink is like more pink than I typically go for. Every once in a while I will. This is called Happy Love. So I'm gonna try one on and then we'll, you know, wipe it off and do it again. I don't think these are like a terrible lip product, but I'm not gonna reach for these. Like if I'm going for this kind of a product that's like a moisturizing, balmy lipstick, I have so many from the drugstore, like the L'Oreal ones in the clear packaging. Um, Revlon has their like lipstick line that's like their shines, or maybe that's L'Oreal's. They're literally, every drugstore brand makes these, and I think they're more comfortable than this is. But let me show you the peach one too. Like I said, it doesn't look bad. It's just not something I'm like dying to use virtually ever. <laughs> Yeah, this is like too orange for me. All right, doesn't look great. Uh, I don't know what this is. This just showed up. It's like coming through the lipstick and my other one doesn't have that, nor did the peach one have it before just now. Isn't that weird? Anyway, it's just not, a, it's not my color. <laughs> I, I gotta wipe it off. So the other lip product I have here is one that I think I didn't like the way it made my lips feel. And so that's a reason I was like, I think it might be time. And this one's newer to me. It's from Rimmel. It's the Stay Plumped Gloss. And I have it in 1999. It's totally a color that's I like. It's similar to my lip color. It smells like Christmas candies. You know the like ribbon candy? That's what this smells like to me. But like a cinnamon version of it. I can't explain it. It's pretty, right? Like I like the way this looks. But I can already feel it's getting the tingle. But it's a different... I don't mind a tingle. Like there are plumping glosses that are some of my favorite in the world, but this tingle is just a tingle I don't like. It just bothers me. And every time I've worn it, it's all I can think about and I end up wiping it off. So, mm. so I'm gonna go through these and divide them up into keep and declutter. 
I think I'm ready. Let's start with what I'm keeping. I'm gonna keep the Wet n Wild Impossible Primer because you know what? My skin looks really nice and I don't know yet if I can attribute it to the primer or the foundation, but I'm really liking how smooth my nose looks too. So I'm gonna hold on to it for a little while longer. I'm also gonna hold on to the foundation because like I said, I'm really liking the way my skin looks. So I need to reach for this more and see if it is this that's doing that because I just, I'm digging it, man. I am digging it. This is one I'm still on the fence about, but I'm gonna keep because I do wanna try it mixed in with the foundation. I just need to actually do it. I'm gonna keep the MAC Cream Color Base in Pearl because this is a really pretty highlighted look. And again, it's just one of those things I'd kind of forgotten about. So this I'm gonna keep because I really like the way my eyeshadow turned out, the Smashbox Trio and Showmance. I'm just assuming they still sell this. I really like it and it's something just slightly different but it was still really easy to do so I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna keep the Bye Bye Panda Eyes. I, like I said, I wouldn't recommend it as a favorite mascara but there's nothing wrong with it and I feel like I'll use it enough and then when it dries up, I'll get rid of it because I can't pass this on to like donate or anything like that. And I'm gonna keep the Rare Beauty Liquid Liner because now that I've kind of cleaned it up and I'm hoping it doesn't like leak anymore, it looked really nice and it was super easy to use. I'm gonna get rid of the Maybelline glass spray. Like I said, it, it's right for some people, it's just not right for me. Hated, <laughs> this is the loser, I'm sorry, of the whole video, hated the Bright Fix Eye Brightener from Fenty, that one is gone. I am gonna get rid of the Rare Beauty blush. I just keep giving it a try and while I don't think it looks bad at all today, it's just too finicky for me and there's so many other cream blushes I already own and love, so it's time. I'm really sad because this is the prettiest blush I own packaging wise. I'm gonna get rid of MAC Vintage Selection. It just doesn't do anything for me and I know honestly one of my sisters would look so pretty in this and it just it just doesn't work. It doesn't do anything for me. Can it finally pass on the Charlotte Tilbury lip sticks? I might toss the Happy Peach one that's got the thing. I don't know what that is. I just, the formula's not for me and there's better out there. And I'm gonna get rid of the ColourPop Cheek Dew because the shade in Bubbles is not for me. But like I said, I might buy another shade of this. And the Rimmel Gloss, even though I think it is absolutely beautiful. See, I'm like looking at it, I'm like, I really, really like it. But the feeling it gives is just like, ooh, but it looks so pretty. Ugh. I'm genuinely torn about this one. Maybe I'll hold on to it for a bit longer. If I don't use it anymore, I'm gonna try to like leave it on and see if I can handle it. If I end up like wiping it off because I can't handle it or I don't reach for it again in the next month or two, I'll, I'll pass it on then. Cause I just love this shade so much. All right, I just had like stopped filming and I'm popping this in a little bit earlier. I couldn't do it, I wiped it off. So the Rimmel Gloss has to go. There we go, decision made. The other thing I had mentioned in this is the Revlon Color Stay Light Cover Foundation. I'm not gonna get rid of it yet because I didn't get to try it again today. So I need to try this again before I like make a decision on that. I think I've done a video this style maybe once before. I need to do this more often because this was such a great way to try out basically almost a full face of makeup and really get an idea of those things that are like forgotten about in my makeup collection or that I'm kind of on the fence about give them another shot, really pay close attention to them with a microscope and decide then and there, you know, whether or not I wanna keep them. So let me know if you enjoyed this, give it a thumbs up if you did. If you'd wanna see this more regularly on my channel, maybe every other month, I could certainly add that to my like list, my series list and do this more often because it's kind of fun. I gotta figure out what I'm gonna actually call this video though. There's like five different things I could call it. But thank you again for watching all the way to the end. If you enjoyed it, I hope you'll subscribe. Check out some of my other videos down below and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.